and welcome to our third installment of Fine Art Fridays. So far this fall, we've talked about Impressionism and Cubism. What can you remember about Impressionism that made it stand out as an art movement of its own? Impressionism was when art moved outdoors, thanks to portable oil paint and tubes, and when artists started focusing on the feelings of their scene rather than trying to recreate it exactly. Last month, we talked about Cubism and how Picasso and Brock started the movement by breaking their scene down into geometric shapes. There's two types of Cubism, analytic and synthetic. Do you remember which one we created? We created synthetic Cubism by using paper, markers, and anything else we liked to create a collage style piece. This month, I want to talk about Surrealism, an art movement that started in Europe in the 1920s. To learn about the origins of Surrealism, we need to learn a little bit about the art movement that happened before it as well. Dada, or Dadaism, was an art movement that started in 1916, right in the middle of World War I. A bunch of artists and everyday people across Europe were frustrated with the war and had developed the mindset that everything was backwards or nothing made sense. To express these emotions, artists started creating satirical or sarcastic or humorous art meant to poke fun at the life that they felt they were living in. If everyday life had changed so drastically, why shouldn't they change their art to reflect that as well? Their hope was that people would see their art and then question the world that they were living in and then hopefully make a change. After the Dadaists started to fade out, the next art movement took into the spotlight, Surrealism. Surrealist artists liked how Dadaists took all their ideas to the extreme and put all their craziest thoughts down on paper or into their sculptures, but they felt it wasn't always necessary to use negative thoughts for art or to display only the bad things going on in the world. Instead, they took the confidence of the Dadaist and used it to create imaginative and dreamlike pieces. Surrealists thought that art could be used as a medium to express subconscious thoughts, like dreams or other concepts that were hard to put into words and meant something different to each and every viewer. Here's an artist you might know, or if you don't know him, you might know his art, Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali was one of the first artists to dabble with surrealism. Dali was very interested in the idea of converting subconscious thoughts into art. He referenced his own dreamlike state to create a lot of his pieces. His most famous piece, The Persistence of Memory, is also one of the most popular pieces associated with surrealism. Dali created this piece in 1931. One topic that was a favorite of his was time and how time seemed to work differently when you were dreaming. Check out all the melting clocks in this painting. It's as if Dali is trying to say, I am trying to see what time it is, but the clocks aren't working right. The pocket watch in the bottom left corner doesn't have a time on it at all, but instead lots of ants. Is something attacking the time in this world? And what is that creature in the center? When I first saw this painting, I thought it was a horse laying down with a saddle on its back. Upon closer look, I decided it is definitely not a horse, but I still can't tell really what it's supposed to be either. Some people who have shared their analysis of this piece have said that it almost looks like a face with a closed eye and nose, maybe Salvador Dali's dreaming face. And where is all of this happening? It looks like a desert or a dry scene with mountains and water, but the dead tree, one of the clocks and the pocket watch look like they're on a perfectly square table or something. This isn't an easy piece to analyze or say what's going on. And that's all right. This is what surrealism is all about. Let's look at another piece by Salvador Dali. This one is called Soft Watch at Moment of First Explosion and was created in 1954. Notice anything familiar in this painting? The watch, the surface that it's on and the mountains and water in the bottom right corner look just like the ones in the persistence of memory. Dali made multiple pieces of art using the same elements as his famous memory painting over the course of his career. This piece, however, seems a little more destructive, like time is jumping and exploding off the earth. Again, gravity is pulling the scene in all directions. The numbers and hands are cracking and seem to be floating away. What do you think this painting symbolizes? Is the loss of time a good or a bad thing? For our second surrealist artist, I want to take a look at Joan Miro. Miro was also one of the original creators of Surrealism, but he used a different method to create his art than Dali. In this piece, Carnival of Harlequin by Miro, there is a lot going on. This is because Miro liked to let his imagination flow and put down as much as he could on paper or canvas. 
Let's look closer at some different elements in this painting. All of the creatures seem weird and seem to be putting on a show. Look at this guy in the middle. He is holding a stringed instrument, but to make sure that we know he is playing music, Miro drew music notes. And what are these guys on the left doing? Are they jumping off a tall ladder into a small pool? This scene is definitely crazy like a circus. Pause this video or take a look at it up close on Google Arts and Culture and see what other crazy performers you can find. For our last surrealist artist, I want to take a look at René Magritte. He started creating surrealism art in the 1920s with Dali and Miro, but many of his most popular pieces came later in his career in the 50s or 60s. I really like Magritte and I could make a whole video on his art, but I'll try to keep it short for this one and show you just a few of my favorites. Let's jump back to the theme of time and surrealism with this first piece, Time Transfixed. Magritte created this piece in 1938, and it's actually on display at the Chicago Museum of Art, so if you ever get the chance to go, keep an eye out for it. Just like the title says, this piece looks like time has been transfixed, or stopped. The train coming out of the fireplace is stopped in midair. But wait, is that train coming out of a brick wall? Where is the back of the fireplace? Magritte is great at creating very simple pieces that still stir up the questions of a surreal piece. What is going on? Remember how Dali used features from his The Persistence of Memory piece in his soft watch painting? Magritte liked to do this too and feature items and people, or motifs, in multiple paintings to create a mysterious effect. Two common things that you can find in some of Magritte's paintings are a green apple and a man with a suit and a bowler hat. This piece is called The Listening Room and was created by Magritte in 1952. A green apple is featured in many pieces by Magritte and is usually hiding something or in front of something. Magritte said he did this on purpose. He wanted to take an ordinary object and add suspense and mystery to it. By having an obscure part of the scene, he creates questions for the viewer. What is going on behind the apple? Why is the apple so big? Just like time transfixed, this piece is very simple, but also raises complex questions. Another motif that Magritte painted regularly was the man in the bowler hat. There are numerous paintings with this type of man in them, but this is my favorite one because to me, it feels kind of eerie. This piece is called Golconda and was created in 1953. Many people think that the man with the bowler hat is based off of Magritte himself because he too dressed in a suit with a bowler hat and lived in a suburban area. But do you think he ever witnessed anything like this? In this painting, it looks like all the men are being lifted up into the sky. Why are they floating or maybe flying away? Is it aliens? Is it the end of the world? They all look very calm. So maybe this is just normal for the world that they live in. For our last piece, let's look at what might be the origin of Rene Magritte's apple and bowler hat man motifs. The Son of Man, created in 1946. Just like The Persistence of Memory, this piece is one of the most popular surrealism pieces. And what do we have? The man with the bowler hat's face partially obscured by a green apple. This one is a confirmed self-portrait, and Magritte says he added the apple to give the painting a mysterious feeling. He says, Everything we see hides another thing. We always want to see what is hidden by what we see. What do you think? Are you curious about what the man's face looks like? He seems to be outside on a cloudy day. Maybe he's happy because he likes cooler weather. Or maybe he is sad because it might be about to rain. There's a different answer for every viewer who analyzes this painting. And that's the beauty of surrealism. There's no right or wrong answers. Only lots and lots of questions. Okay, we talked about a few different artists this month, looked at a lot of paintings, and asked a lot of unanswered questions. Let's recap surrealism. The Surrealism art movement came right after the Dada art movement, a movement where artists made fun of the world that they lived in. Surrealists like how bold the Dadaists were, but wanted to focus more on lighthearted or dream state-like things. Surrealist artists used their own dreams, their own chaotic thoughts, and simple questions to make their art stand out to each and every one of its viewers. Let's see if we can create some awe-inspiring, maybe a little confusing, Surrealism-style art ourselves.
right, everybody, let's get creating. First thing I wanted to mention is that I'm using my old art box from my past impressionism video. You'll have a brand new one with brand new paints and brushes for you to pick up for this project. You'll also notice that you have two paintbrushes this month, a regular one and a super little fine tipped one for any really fine little details you might wanna add into your piece. There's a few different methods we can use to create surrealism. You can make a dream inspired piece like Salvador Dali, a piece with just lots of different thoughts going on like Joan Miro, or just a generally odd piece like Rene Magritte. I'm making a mix between a dream inspired piece and just a weird piece. One dream that I have from time to time is that I'm going on a trip and I can't pack everything I need, or that I want to bring weird things with me, like my lizards or way too many books. I thought that this was a great idea for a surrealist piece. A whole bunch of odd things in a room. We can't tell if they're going somewhere or if someone's just getting home. There's a lot of questions that can be asked. I started with making my room shape, and then I drew an outline of all the objects I wanted to include in my scene. The little video in the bottom right is my practice sketch I made before I started to plan out all my details. I decided I wanted to include a suitcase, a box, a large pile of books, a lizard because that's definitely one of the weirdest things I think I needed to bring on a trip in one of my dreams. I decided to include some tools, like a shovel and a rake in the background, and some shoes that are just sitting on the floor. There's a lot going on, and that's okay. That's what surrealism is all about. You can make a plan for your piece if you want, or you can just start painting, kind of like Joan Miro did in his piece, Carnival of Harlequin. I like to have a plan for my piece so I know where I want to put stuff and what color I want to make things. I chose to use dull colors for most of my objects so that my lizard would stand out in the middle.
To make shadows in a piece, I mix a little bit of gray with whatever color is underneath the object that I'm making a shadow for. So, because my room is a grayish, kind of brownish, yellowish color, I mixed a little bit of gray with that color and then added it behind my objects to make it look like they were sitting or that there's a light source coming from the ceiling making a shadow. this piece because it asks so many questions. Is the artist going on a trip? Are they moving? Are they maybe getting back from somewhere? Or they bought a lot of weird things? What is going on? Why are those books so big? Why is the lizard so big on the suitcase? I wonder what's in that box in the back. Is it clothes? Is it rocks? Is it fabric? We don't know. And here is my finished piece. I can't wait to see what wacky ideas you all come up with. Feel free to email me pictures of your work or put them in the comments below this video. I hope you guys all have fun creating a surrealism style piece and I will see you again next month for pop art. Have a great day everyone!